Welcome to Lecture Online. We know that when we Sometimes deal with RL, we take the derivative of an equation or of a, a particular. Okay. Um, hmm, hmm. Welcome to Lecture Online. Since RL circuits and RC circuits end up having first order differential equations, we need to know how to take the derivative of any input function. In this case, if the input function is a unit step function, we need to be able to take the derivative of an input step function. What does that look like? What does the DDT of one of these look like? The reason why it seems kind of mysterious is because the derivative of a function gives us the rate of change of the function. It gives us the slope of any point of the function. But notice the slope is equal to zero over here. It's equal to zero over there, which means the derivative on this side and that side of time equals zero is equal to zero. But what is the derivative at this very moment when we change from zero to one? Well, the change there is instantaneous, and so the slope then would have to be infinite. And the time duration over which the slope is infinite would be zero in length. That's kind of a strange thing. So in order to be able to handle that, we've come up with a function. It turns out that this is equal to the delta function. Now, what does this mean here? Well, another name for it, it's called a unit impulse function. Let's write that down. So the unit impulse function, otherwise known in mathematics as the delta function, becomes infinite over a zero period of time. Hmm, that's kind of strange. That's like infinity divided by zero. A very strange thing, but really what that means is that if we draw that, on a magnitude versus time graph, and of course this would be the delta function, the delta function right here. What that means is that for a momentary moment in time, which is infinitely small, we get infinity, because at that point the slope is infinity, but it only lasts for a zero period of time. Hmm. Well, it turns out that if we integrate that delta function, from minus infinity to infinity, which basically would be equal to the integral from minus zero to plus zero. This means a very small amount of time before zero and a very small amount of time after zero of this delta function, which is equal to infinity. And of course, I need a dt there, so let me make some room for a dt times dt. It turns out by definition that is equal to one. In other words, the area underneath this function, since it's infinitely narrow and infinitely tall, by definition, the area underneath that curve will be equal to 1. And that's called the unit impulse function or the delta function, and that means that it is the derivative of the unit step function. Now, to define it just a little bit more, what we can say is that this delta function is equal to 0 for t less than 0, it's equal to zero for t greater than zero, and it's equal to infinity for time equal to zero. Wow, that's kind of a strange function, but that's, after all, the definition of the delta function, and it's the representation of the derivative of unit step function, which, after all, we're going to need for those first order differential equations in RL and RC circuits. And that's what we mean by the derivative of a unit step function.